some pretty punchy questions absolutely no please yeah. ask anything you'd like and right. um, I'll really give you permission you're, okay. you're a good friend and right. I respect you and uh, yeah we need to do that when did you first begin to realize that MLS was in trouble I guess during the credit crunch which would have been um, middle of 08 yeah. um, when um, financing got difficult uh, we were growing the business quite fast. Um, I, I suppose in, in one sense before that, because we were looking to take it to the stock market and we yeah. didn't make it, so we ended up um, in, in the wrong place at the wrong time with, with a lot of debt. In the middle of 08, we started to look at different alternatives as, as to what we could do to try and stabilise the situation, mm -hmm. secure finance for the future, and, and it, it was the very worst time to be doing that. And as, as the cash flow got more difficult, how, what effect was that having on you? Um, I ended up having sleepless nights eventually. Uh, I was thinking about it all the time. It uh, challenged a lot of my, um, um, I guess, yeah, the, my feelings about how you should do business as a, as a Christian. Mm -hmm. And um, ideally, I wanted to pay my suppliers on time, have a good reputation, look after my staff. But one was ending up, uh, I was ending up in a situation where my company was unable to do that. Um, the options were closing down. Um, I had a, a management team who spent time together and discussed that. We brought mm -hmm. in a turnaround expert, very good guy to help us. Yeah. So I believe we took some good advice. But um, in, in the end, I couldn't see, uh, the, the options were closing down and I couldn't see a way, it got to a point where I couldn't see a way through. So I was uh, not sleeping at nights. Um, there's a limited number of friends you can talk to about that. Yeah. Um, in fact, I met a lot of the people that work for my business were from my home church or church connections. And, and because of my relational attitude in life generally, mm. uh, a lot of the people that work for me, senior managers, were friends. Okay. So it, it became quite difficult to communicate uh, as well what I was feeling. And, and so I felt I, I kind of closed down to some extent um, emotionally um, yeah. in terms of my, my relationships. Now, I remember picking up an Evening Standard, the main London newspaper, right, on yeah. around about page three or five. That's right. It's a great big story about yeah. the secret millionaire, That's MLS right. Business Services, and a variety of testimonies from your tenants talking about how badly they felt that they'd been dealt with. That's right. And they're really coming against you and the company. Yes, yeah. How do you feel? And do you think that there was validity in what they were saying? Um, I felt um, angry about the story because a lot of the facts stated in it were untrue. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to react, I wanted to get in touch with a journalist, I wanted to put my side of the story. Um, I spoke to a PR agency who were helping us at that time, um, a Christian um, friend there who, who was a director who I have a lot of respect for, and he said, look, just leave it because if you go back, um, you may feel you've been wronged and some, some of the key facts are wrong, but if you go back, they will just uh, whip up the story because you are uh, the millionaire person. Uh, the, the story is saying there are other um, people with small businesses who've been uh, hurt and affected by you and you go back and they'll just make more of it and it will all be forgotten in a few days yeah. and that was very hard to do. Have you been able to salvage assets out of the whole MLS thing? Um, I wouldn't say I've been able to salvage assets. Um, I've lost more money personally in terms of my wealth. Um, a lot of it tied up in that business. Yeah. The majority of it tied up in that. It was my biggest company. Yeah. I do have other, other yeah. smaller companies. Yeah. So I've lost more than any, anybody else singly yeah. um, in what happened. Um, so I haven't lost my house, um, although I am working through um, sale of, of, of that over the next year and yeah. some other assets. Um, uh, it's a difficult one. As, as you say, limited liability is there uh, for a reason and I would not have taken the risks I did uh, yeah. without that as most business people wouldn't. And I, and I think we did our very best and through the administration that was there to get the very best for creditors and we worked with the administrators at that time, talked to competitors, got the best deal to look after creditors. Let's say that you could quantify that the, the ones that were in abject difficulty represented quarter of a million mm, pounds mm, mm, mm. and someone came to you and said, well, now Paul, you said you were a Christian but we know that you've still got over here two, three million. Mm. Couldn't you have helped us out privately? Would that have been right? Um, 
I think there are t two issues there. What, one is, is English law, and um, the, which says you can't prefer creditors. So uh, I, I'd have to be very, very careful how right. I did that, um, yeah. because you, you can't say, because that small businessman's going to lose his business, I'm going to help him, but you can't. Um, but I'm not going to help British Telecom, who owed some telephone bills, because actually in the big picture it won't make a difference. I got you. So you, you've got to be very, very careful uh, legally, and we, again, were very aware of that. Are there particular ones, post what has happened, you'd be going to them and saying, OK, I messed up there, forgive me? Anybody who's, who's come to us by email or by phone uh, or by letter um, complaining uh, or just uh, expressing their um, disquiet difficulties with what happened, we've picked up the phone to them and spoken to them. Um, some of them we've gone and seen um, during the administration process. We actually went face to face with a number of people, particularly the, the, the largest creditors. We tried to sit down face to face, apologise uh, where we were able to for what we felt we'd done, for the situation they were in, and we tried to explain what we were trying to do to look after their their interests and um, the turnaround expert who came in, who was a Christian, uh, was a really good guy, uh, strong character again, really helped us in that communication process because because we weren't weren't that good in some areas of communication again looking back and he he helped us with that particularly in the final stages. Okay, so in terms of the things that you would have done differently if you could have, um, I would have slowed down the growth of the business. I was um, I guess taken over by the vision of creating a big business, an international yeah. business and I would not have built it on so much debt because in the end I ended up with a lot of debt at the wrong time and that was um, a big mistake. Do you think you could have seen the warning signs earlier? Yeah, we could have, uh, particularly in the area of cost cutting, uh, cutting jobs, um, looking at overheads. They're really what I'd call, the, what I'd say are the tough decisions and we would delay taking those decisions believing that some other solution would work, things would get better. So although we had those options we left it much too late and I'd say to people who maybe are facing difficulties with their cash flow, with the business, the business perhaps not being profitable, just not being able to meet its obligations, take the tough decisions now. And that can be hard as a Christian because you genuinely care for people who work for you, you know that they've got mortgages and families but in the end if you don't take the decision a lot more people's livelihoods will suffer and um, and you've got to do that there are ways of doing it but you've got to take those tough decisions as yeah. quickly as you can in the foundations of what you were doing do you think your inspiration was mostly the leading of the Lord or do you think there was personal ambition overriding perhaps the voice of the Lord definitely personal ambition um, I mean I found it increasingly difficult well, you know when when you're building a successful I put that in inverted commas successful company, you're international, you're employing over 500 people, turning over 50 million, uh, you're in the fast track, um, you've been on Secret Millionaire series, series other newspaper articles, all this sort of thing, it, it feeds your ego. And uh, no matter how humble you might appear to other people underneath, you do feel a certain amount of, you know, your chest swells and you feel this is, this is me. And, um, and, and that's hard to deal with. I want to be really careful before I take on anything new and do anything significantly new. I really do want to hear God and uh, looking back I perhaps didn't hear him, in fact I didn't hear him. To actually put real Christian foundations in the business for Christian godly um, foundations to run through the whole business, that, that is really difficult yeah. and uh, far more difficult than I thought it would be and um, I still want to learn about that. I do believe God's got so much to say about yeah. that to yeah. us. So much yeah, to we say. haven't quite got there yet, have we? No, we haven't. No, and I didn't. I didn't make it, but I'm not going to give up. And I want to walk more closely with people like you and others who are trying to walk yeah. walk that path.